welcome back to another workout commentary and actually the start of this vlog so put the workout at the start of the video which I don't usually do but nonetheless there's still some vlogging footage in this video um, if you're wondering though there isn't actually any raw workout clips uh, I didn't record any for this workout but I'm definitely gonna keep doing those maybe even for back day in a few days so yeah I'm still gonna be bringing them to the channel if you're wondering uh, with regards to this workout here though uh, I did legs and abs, or I meant to do abs as well, but I find that whenever I do uh, legs with anything else, um, if there's anything more than maybe one exercise or two exercises, I always find it really hard to actually have the energy, because uh, for me anyway, leg day is always really taxing, and especially if you're doing heavy squats, I always find if I don't rest for, for at least a minute between sets, uh, which you should be doing if you're going heavy, I actually find that it's really hard for me to catch my breath, um, sometimes I even feel sick, uh, that's why I don't take pre-workout or fizzy drinks, like energy drinks, like even uh, zero calorie monster on leg day because I've had experiences where I've actually thrown up from it. Um, but yeah, anyway, I think I'm going to change my leg day to pure leg days, just six exercises for an overall leg workout, probably squats, probably two other compound pressing movements for my legs uh, for optimal growth. Well, with these squats I was doing here though, usually I'd do high bar back squats, I actually did uh, front squats for once. I've never actually done these so I really wanted to practice my form. Started really low, worked my way up with it. Actually you would have just seen there that I went up to 20 the other side but I did one rep and I just <laughs> it hurt my front delts way too much and that's something that I kind of discovered might be wrong with my form so if you have got any advice for the form on this maybe a different way to hold the bar. I know that you can have kind of your fingers uh, underneath the bar instead of having the bar um, with your arms crossed over like I did but I didn't really try that and I, I personally find it really bad on my wrist but I guess it's all about mobility and just getting used to it. But yeah, didn't go up any higher than 15 other side. Now I suggest if you're getting used to a new exercise in your training that you've never done before it's better to start from the bottom and work your way up definitely with the weight so just take your time with it. Uh, don't put on weight that you do with some other kind of exercise um, just assuming that you'll be able to do it. And a perfect example of this is actually the second movement that we did. We did one-legged leg press, which I've mentioned this before in my commentaries. Uh, doing one-legged movements, one-arm movements, you know, one-arm lateral raise, whatever it is that you're doing, um, it's really good to correct any kind of muscle size and strength imbalances. So great for making sure that your muscles are overall equally strong, but also so that you're actually symmetrical, which is a very big part of uh, competitions and just in general having a good all-round looking physique. I uh, actually superset those with these standing calf raises with this machine here because it was three of us training and I wanted to keep my rest quite short because I got about 15 to 20 reps with those uh, leg presses which means I shouldn't really be resting for any longer than maybe a minute and because it was three of us doing one leg at a time it took quite a while so I decided to superset them with calf raises. Uh, I found that with my squatting shoes, doing certain exercises like these or stiff-legged deadlifts where I want to put my toes on top of a plate to further the stretch on my hamstrings, um, these shoes actually aren't the best for that, so I might start bringing either both my Converse and my squat shoes on leg day, or I might just, you know, kind of mix and match and some days just take my Converse, because I find that wearing my Converse helps so much more when it comes to uh, calves definitely. After that went on to a quad isolation movement doing 5 second eccentrics and 5 second pauses at the top on these. When you're pausing at the top uh, that basically means squeezing as hard as you can so at the top that's when you should be squeezing and contracting the muscle as much as you can and if you're doing that for 5 seconds don't squeeze as hard as you can for a second and just kind of hold it around the area make sure that you're squeezing it as hard as you can and keeping it there for the full 5 seconds and then yeah getting a really slow controlled eccentric on the way down really pulling on those muscle fibers. Uh, this is a great thing to do if you've got knee pain or to lower the risk of any future knee pain from using this machine. Uh, if you use it on a regular basis it can be quite taxing on your knees if you are going heavy so that's something that I've been putting into my training as a regular thing and they are great for really firing up your quads and yeah it's a good one to try if you've never done them that slow or with squeezes like that. And then just finishing the workout off with these lying hamstring curls Pretty generic, uh, slow and controlled, making sure that you give full range of motion on these. Um, again, choosing a weight where you can fully bring your heels up to your glutes and get a full contraction on the muscle. So that's the workout commentary. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed the rest of this vlog as well. And I'll see you in the next clip. Just finished up at the gym with Mitch. 
had my hat on the entire time, hence the hat hair. <laughs> I actually need to go have a shower now, just having one one scoop. It's actually the last scoop of the tub, so I need to get a new tub uh, soon. Um, I can have a shower. And I'm sorry that I'm topless, but I have to wash my gym tops in there so they don't stink. Yummy. going to go have a shower now and hopefully be going to the Nike store and hopefully get food because I'm very hungry. <laughs> I only had two yogurts for like breakfast pre-workout. Okay guys, so plans have changed. Uh, we're not actually going uh, out for Nando's or Nike Factory today. I uh, haven't actually eaten since breakfast, which I would have said. So I've been fasted for probably like, I don't know, six hours, maybe five hours. I've been in a fasted state for that long. And I didn't even eat a lot this morning. I had two yogurts. So yeah, I'm going to show you what I've just made. I've basically made three separate meals <laughs> and like snacks. Um, this is why I enjoy macro counting, and this is why I enjoy the If It Fits Your Macros diet. I know that it's not good to eat things like this, which I'm about to show you, but it fits into my macros. Um, and at the end of the day, it's all about calories in, calories out when it comes to uh, losing weight or building muscle. Largely, it comes down to that. There are arguments to do with like why intermittent fasting is so good, why carb cycling is so good, and all that kind of stuff. And that some people say you should have eight meals a day, eight small meals. Other people say uh, one massive meal uh, and then the rest of the day fasted. Uh, what, that one massive meal the same time every day or that, that kind of window, of an anabolic um, window of eating. Anyway, I only usually have maybe two actual big meals and then I'll just have like little snacks and small breakfasts. Um, and that's been good enough for me to lose weight, gain weight whenever I've had different uh, goals so yeah what I've actually got here I've got two egg and bacon sandwiches there so there's one egg in each uh, whole eggs and three rashers of bacon so that's in both then got uh, about 120 grams raw of the uh, white basmati rice and then one can of baked beans Heinz uh, so really out of all of these that's probably the, the healthiest option and then I've just got some tiger bread there which has actually got quite a lot of butter on it, a lot more than uh, the sandwich has but I have actually counted for that and then <laughs> the other snack is Jaffa cake. so I've got a whole pack there there's actually 11 there at the moment but there was 12 I had <laughs> had one whilst I was cooking but I actually think that they're not too bad if you're trying to get your carbs up and you're not too bothered with what it is that you're getting your carbs up with hence the unhealthy if it fits your macros option because I think they're like eight to nine grams of carbs per one one gram of fat exactly per one and like half a gram of protein something like that so that whole packet is like over 100 carbs but yeah so this entire meal is gonna be a lot of food but I can fit it in and as I said the meal timing the number of meals you have doesn't really matter too much and the same thing goes for uh, eating before bed a lot of people say uh, if it's past 10 p.m. then don't eat because it stops muscle growth or it makes you fat or anything like that but really it's just down to calorie surplus calorie deficit whether or not you gain muscle or lose uh, weight or fat preferably so I'm gonna eat this now I'll probably do some YouTube comments watch some YouTube videos uh, do other bits and bobs and yeah I'll probably pick up the camera again tomorrow I said I'd keep you guys updated so it's a minor update regarding the competition, but got my membership card, I guess, keyring card today. So, yeah, my name, my membership number, and the expiry date, which is at the end of uh, the competition season, which is just, <coughs> I think, like New Year's Eve, yeah, 31st of December. I also want to touch on something real quick. Um, today and yesterday, I had a really good workout. The commentary that you saw at the start of this video was legs. Um, and that went okay. I did a lot of things that I hadn't done before. I'd never done the one-legged leg press, never done the uh, front squats, to be honest, never done front squats before, or not proper working sets, and it really hurt my front delts so much. Um, but yeah, I want to get better at those, but what I was thinking of <coughs> is this morning I was counting down, or uh, counting up how many months and weeks I have left until uh, the bulk is over and I can no longer gain muscle for the competition or just in general like when the bulk ends and I'm going to be dieting and it's about it's about 12 to 16 weeks if I have uh, 3 to 4 months left so 
that's at least 24 sessions of each muscle group. So they added back and shoulders, so that means I've got another 23, 24. Um, obviously it could be higher, but a minimum of that many uh, sessions left of that. And it just made me think, like, that's still quite a, quite a high number. You can make noticeable difference with your muscle mass and your strength within, like, three or four sessions, so two weeks. Like I say, I always make sure that I am having good workouts. Um, but I think the fact that I was trying some new stuff on leg day, well, that's good to, I will say, go outside of your comfort zone and try new things, like new exercises, new exercise variations. I think if you have a goal and the goal kind of matters more than that and the exercises that you're used to, that you always get a good workout with that, good contraction, good mind to muscle connection, you know, you always feel like you've worked the muscle uh, with those particular exercises, then consider not changing the way that you do things. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, is what I was basically thinking. So, gonna continue to try new things, but if I do a couple of sets of an exercise and I feel like this isn't as good as I thought it would be, uh, go back to the kind of more reliable ones.